Hello, everyone, and welcome to another uh, episode of City Reach Podcast. I'm Ryan Maloof, your host, and it is an honor to be with you. Wherever you find yourself and whatever you're doing, I'm so glad that you allowed us to join you. One of the things that we love to say is don't do life alone, do it with someone. So as you're listening to the podcast, go ahead, call someone up or find a small group on our website and allow yourself to be a part of something that God is doing in the lives of many people. We are called to be in relationship. Well, today we have been doing a whole series in the month of February and Sundays and now in our podcast on relationships. And we're so excited to be joined with our, our my friends, Dana and Andrew Feiger. They're going to be here with us today. And uh, of really, I've had a chance to be with your kids, be with you guys, and hang out. And you are some of the best parents I know. You guys are incredible in your relationship. You have fun everywhere you go. And so I couldn't think of anybody better to talk to us about kind of being being newly married or being young and married and then having kids and then kind of navigating all of that. You guys have been in the military. You've been out of the military. You've, you have four kids and you guys have kind of done the gamut. And so I'm just so excited to, to be a part, to, to spend some time talking about this with you guys. So yeah, I mean, come on. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Excited Excited to be here. Yeah. Listen, so one of the things that I was, you guys kind of wrote down some things that you were thinking about. And I think as a listener, you know, it's not easy to, first of all, kind of be married, period. And then to add kids on top of it. Uh, How have you guys found the ability to navigate balancing relationship with each other and young kids? Because you guys as kids, tell tell everybody kind of what your age group of kids are so they understand that this is a real, this is a real thing. (laughs) We're in the thick of it. We're in the trenches. So So we have four kids, as you said. Um, We've got an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a almost two-year-old. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Wessie, crazy Wessie. Yes. Yeah, you guys jumped all in in the deep end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So how how have you guys found the ability to kind of balance all of that? So early on in our marriage, we we learned something called vertical alignment, and and that helped us uh, put things in perspective, and so. And it also helps us prioritize things in our life and people in our lives. And so the way that works is uh, first is God, that, that he always needs to be number one in your life. And then second is your spouse. And that's easy when it's just the two of you and you're married. But when you start adding kids, kids need to come number three. And that's where a lot of marriage problems, I think, come in is that you put so much time into kids, which you have to. Their needs are immediate. But if you neglect yourselves, then your marriage is not going to work. No, I've, I've actually seen that many times where like literally the kids grow up and get out of the house. And then what, what do you even Most have Most divorce happens yeah. when the kids leave the house because you turn no around and yeah. you don't have a relationship with who, that person. Who so how have you guys balanced that? Talk to me a little bit about how you've done it wrong and how you've done it right and what that looks like. Uh, something I always remember when we first got married and we were being mentored, we found people in our life who had a marriage that we were like, wow, that looks like they have a great relationship or they have amazing kids. And Mm. we, we looked at that and said, Hey, we need to pick their brain, take them to dinner. That's the first thing we did when we met you or like, your kids are amazing. Tell us what you Mm. did. And something I always remember is that someone told us early on, you never start out successfully married. Like you're not a successful parent. Yeah, no, that's good. You don't, you learn from trial and error. You learn along the way. And most people, it's a lot of struggle to learn. And all, all you have, you have examples to glean from like what you grew up with, but that usually is not the best. Well, and you, you, you had, I mean, you were one of 14, if I, 13, yes, you Mm -hmm. were one of 13 kids. I mean, there was a lot that you kind of, it's like King David, you know, he learned from Saul or, I mean, he learned from King Saul kind of the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. I think all of us have a little bit of that experience. It might be more wrong and more right, but there's been a lot. And and then Andrew, you were in the military. There was a lot of things that you guys were juggling when you first got married, but then there were some Mm -hmm. things that you had to settle 
And some of that was just watching people. I, I love it. Yes. Right. Yes. And we like just learned early on that mentorship is so important because none of us are successful when we start out. And, and so even if your parents had a good relationship and you saw that you didn't see the work they put into it behind closed doors or yeah. when you were little and they were in the trenches, you may, you started kind of noticing stuff when you were probably 10, 12, 14 years old as a teenager, you may have seen more of it, but you still didn't know what happened behind closed doors. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm a person and I'm married and I have a kid and I'm at a church. How do I go about doing that? What does that look like? Do I just walk up to somebody and say this? Like, is that what you guys did? So pretty much. More or less. And, yeah. and we prayed for people to come into our life who could help us. And you have to go after it. People aren't going to come up to you and be like, are you struggling with raising your kids? How can we help? And what can <laughs> let we me mentor you? Let me mentor Unless you. Unless your children are getting kicked out of class, you know? <laughs> right. And so you have to be the one to go after that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And we just always found ourselves because of people, what our mentors told us early on, we found ourselves always looking at people like the fruit on their tree. If, like I said, if they had a great relationship, we picked their brain and we, just gleaned so much. Even before we reached those times where we'd use that information, a lot of it stuck and we just prayed that the yeah. Lord would yeah. direct us to the people who could help us. I remember season. when I was tucking in my kids when they were, you know, your guys' kids age, this whole vertical alignment thing, I didn't know that that's what it was called, but I just remember hearing it somewhere being described. Mm -hmm. And I would tell my children, I say, I love you but I love your mommy more. And then I would say, and then I love Jesus more than I love your mommy. Mm -hmm. And you just need to know that's like, I love you with all my heart. And we would have these conversations with our kids and it was never like telling them that I love them less. It was just, I want you to know that I love your mommy more than I love anybody else. And then I love you. Mm -hmm. And then there might be some other people, but, but first it's Jesus, then it's mommy. And then it's you. They, that makes kids feel safe. Even though Andrew had this conversation had, with I've Gabriel conversation, just yeah. a week ago saying that, you know, I love your mommy more than I love you. And they were like, what? what? <laughs> kind of puts them in their place, but in a good way. Like yeah. they, they realize that they don't run the house, that they have, there is a pecking order, if you want to call that, within yeah. the house. And my time is devoted to her. And we've even had conversations where at the end of the night, they're getting in bed. Like, we want to stay up with you. I was like, no, y'all are going to bed right now. Yeah. It is past your bedtime. Like, well, we want to spend time with you. We want to snuggle. I'm like, I know. And we love doing that stuff with you. But it's been a week since mom and I have had good conversation. It is time for us to connect and have adult conversation yeah. because we love you. Yeah. And they're kind of like let down, but they understand and they're, and they're respectful of it. Yeah. Because it's not this it's brand new we thing. Talk We've talked about it. And so they understand that. Yeah. And then that helps us reconnect because at the end of the day, if we've been putting into kids and work and everything else and making dinner and putting kids to bed, we're exhausted yeah. and we'll go a week and not have deep, meaningful conversation. Well, you realize it's like, um, everything flows from inside to out. So mm -hmm. if you guys aren't strong, how can you have a great front? How can you have a strong, you know, relationship for your kids yes, and how exactly. can your kids be great if the center is not great? And so you recognize that that center has to be, I know for my wife and I, and just for the listeners, you know, we, we really, um, spent a lot of time working with our kids on bed and what time they went to bed and our children went to bed early, whether they, mm -hmm. you know, I think it was like seven or eight o'clock early on when they were young and there was no wiggle room. This is what we do. You go to bed and because mommy and daddy are going to sit on the couch and we're going to hold hands and we're going to talk or we're going to walk at your show together. So <laughs> yeah. you, you don't get to rule the roost. It is your bedtime. It's going to be good for you mm -hmm. to go to sleep. And that changed our marriage yes. it does. early on, because as we're talking with this first question, balancing relationship and young kids, like you have to have time to be together. Yes. And so what does your bedtime routine look like? Cause you guys have four. So have I mean, that's like, so I mean, we start with the easiest the and kind of work our way down there. <laughs> um, it's usually about seven thirty ish. Yeah. Seven 15. And it kind of depends. And we're not as strict as you guys were with the yeah. times. And if, if there's people over, then we'll let the older boys. Stay and I up. have seen that. 
and, and, and the, we'll let them they're just playing and, and we're having of, a good time together be yeah. part of the experience of having adults around because we wanted them to be able to interact with adults and so but we'll, we'll put the little two down and so we get weston down he's easy it takes like three minutes yeah and then london's a little bit more work and so it's you have to so, convince her <laughs> and so there's you know She's reading and up. singing and scratching back and there's I a process it. and sometimes she'll get up and so we have to go through that and um, but then the, the older boys now are fairly easy. Yeah. And we, we just make sure, I mean, they're down pretty much by like eight or eight thirty. Yeah. Like yeah. at the yeah. latest, because we do need time together. That is the most important thing. And for you, have to be in, you have to be intentional and, and yeah. that's an intentional about your vertical alignment, about actually spending time together. If you're not intentional, then you'll just zone out and get on get on your phone and sit next to each other, but not actually interact or connect or talk. Which we do do sometimes because we're exhausted no, and we I, just I need to it. zone out. <laughs> so that's okay too. Yes, just sit next to each yeah, other. Yeah, just sit ne- literally sit next to each other, and we're gonna watch a show right now, and yeah. it is so wonderful. It is yes. like, and literally, my wife and I do it still. We just sit, we just sit there and we just hold hands, you know, yeah. and it's like a big deal. Just to has us. to connect somehow. So okay, I'm gonna let. I'm just gonna ask the question right uh how have you guys been able to i mean obviously you guys have had sex because you have four children so (laughs) it's it's at least four times but i I think one of the things that is a struggle for a lot of marriages and um just when you add kids and pressure and life Mm -hmm. how have you guys been able to figure that out you know a little bit of that is you know how have you guys worked this out together when it comes to date nights and you know relationship building and conflict and then adding sex in there. If you guys could just kind of unpack all of that for me in this time, I would love to hear how you guys have found your way into kind of making it work Mm -hmm. and finding God's glory in the midst of it. Cause he really did design the family to be a beautiful place. Speak Mm -hmm. to me a little bit about that. Go ahead, babe. (laughs) So uh, sex is very important in your relationship. Now, yeah. when we were first married, that was easy and it was it's very spontaneous. spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> we could do whatever we want, whenever we wanted. And we didn't have to worry about kids coming into our room. Yes. We didn't have to worry about getting them to bed first. We didn't, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so it looks a little bit different today than it did back then. Yeah. Practically speaking. I mean, we, sometimes we have to be like, do you, it's been a little bit, should we do it? Okay, yes. Cue the music. Cue. Like, I mean, it's not very... You, you go get ready. I'll get the stuff ready. I'll make, you know... Yes. And grab some water. I mean, like, practically, that's how yeah. it happens a lot of yeah. times. Yeah. And then we end up with a kid in our bed. So, you know, it's just after that. Yes, not yes, like I get it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, a lot of that is also communication because yeah. when it's spontaneous, it's easy. But if I'm like, hey, babe, I'm going to bed. You want to come up to bed with me? I'm like, no, I just want to sit down here and watch my, the rest of my show. And I'm and not, in my even, mind, it's not I'm even thinking, in my that's, mind. That's my sex cue, babe. Yeah. Come on. Like, yeah, what are you yeah. doing? And she, it is, like you said earlier, it is like not in her mind yeah. at all. And so. How did after, you navigate that? After I've had kids touching me all day. Like, yeah. that's not my love. Like, touch is not. One of my primary love languages. Sensory overload for you. Yeah. And I just, at the end of the day, I don't want anybody to touch me. Like I've just. So how have you navigated that? Like, is it just something that you've just kind of determined this is something I need to do? Like, how have you processed that? You know, and, and how have you guys worked that out together? I learned that I had to communicate my, my question. I couldn't just. Make a reference. Innuendos. And yes, yes. That those don't work. <laughs> no. Especially and they, they still work, coax. but not at the end of the day. Yeah. On a Wednesday night, it is not gonna work. Like yeah. it's just there's too much other stuff going on. And so I, you know, I just need to voice that very clearly. It's like, hey babe, I wanna have sex. It's been a while. Do you want to tonight or is it or do another night or whatever? And so you know, and then we can talk about it, which is something else that, that's a little bit unusual sometimes. Yeah, just Having a discussion about it. Yes, because yeah. it's so ta- sex is so taboo growing up, especially in the Christian community. And then all of a sudden you get married, and it is easy to be spontaneous, but then you have kids and you have to actually talk about it. And it's kind of awkward sometimes yeah. and just having that conversation. But And do you guys do date nights? And how does that look for you? And what, what does some of that, that look like? Yes, we've had to be very intentional about that too. I mean, we just, we have to schedule it. And for me, honestly, it's, 
really good for me as a mom. I homeschool my children too. I'm with them 24 yeah. seven and I need little carrots in front of me to get me like yes. just little things to look forward to. Um, you know, and we even talked about, yes, we do do date nights now and we have the money for that to get a babysitter, to have a nice dinner. But there's even things you can do, like very simple things you can do with your spouse, you you know, and and be able to make it work even if you're not at a place where you feel like you can afford yeah. to go on a date. I night. remember early on, before we had any money, we started saying we want to be creative with dates. And this was before we had kids. But Dana sat me on the sofa and blindfolded me. And then she went into our room. And <laughs> it does, she, it's not too crazy. Don't worry. She dragged our queen mattress out of, off the bed, down the hallway and put it in the living room so that we could fall asleep and watching TV. Set yeah. up a bunch of pillows, pillows just had, a, had and, some fun yeah. food. We didn't have a TV in our room. Yeah. And so that, that was like our date night. And it was, it was very unbelievable. Very you remember cheap, it like but, yes. but creative and yes. fun. And it cost us no money. We had yeah. to eat dinner anyways. And we had, we just laid on the mattress on the floor, watch some, you know, I, I think kind of the, one of the things I'm getting out of this too, as you guys are sharing is just being intentional with each yes. other and, and finding ways to, you know, um, and I know there's multiple books out there, but, you know, speaking each other's love language yes. and figuring out each other and recognizing, okay, this is what my wife needs and this is what my needs are and learning to share those. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, because I remember early on in Dana and I's relationship is that a lot of it was all, I didn't know how to communicate it. So I was trying to speak innuendos about <laughs> things that I needed and she wasn't picking up on it. And so then I just assumed that she didn't like me or it was rejecting me or mm-hmm. doesn't find me attractive. Right. And none of those things were true. And so I just, I would say, you know, when the Bible talks about, you know, clearly communicating and how to, how to be a spouse and how to love each other and honor each other. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't realize that, that a lot of that is around just learning to communicate to one another, Yes, how to have words for each other. I know for, mm-hmm. for my, my wife and I, we, we found a way to communicate about sex, you know, mm-hmm. in a text, you know, I have a, I have a special <laughs> emoji that I use that is our secret emoji. I'm not telling anybody, but it's our, it's but it's, but it's the one that I I'll send, you know, and, and, and we found that it really works for us because she's able to then process throughout the day. I'll usually send it to her early on, like, Hey, just so you have time. You know, like, like you just, so you can prepare mentally, yes. you know, spiritually, physically, you know, yes. but, but then it, it, it gives me something to look forward to. It gives her a process. And next thing right. I know we're, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and then we're finding a way to connect with each other, right. take time with one yes. another. I think even in that sex experience, learning to just take time too, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and just not just hurry through and right. get to the finish line, but 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 spending time with one another just allows that process to be any anything else there you guys want to add? Um, I, I know I, we've got here uh, about how do I get better at being a parent? And some of that was what you guys already talked about is mentorship. Mm-hmm. Um, was there anything else that you guys wanted to add it in, in some of those things? Um, I would say expectations. Oh, yeah, this is good. Expectation management. Yeah. In all of this, because expectations ruin relationships. Yeah. That's just... So talk a little bit about that. What does that mean? So I know that I had a problem with where I would expect Dana to do something or I would want her to do something, whatever it was, clean clean the dishes or unload the dishwasher, or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. And, and I would think, why am I always doing this? She never helps out with whatever this task is. I'm not going to do it anymore. And I'd wait for a day. I'd wait for two days. I'd wait for three days. And I would, in this, in the frustration and the annoyance would build up into me to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. And I'd be like, fine. I'll, and I just do it myself. And Dana has, she's oblivious to that. That I'm like testing her through this thing. <laughs> I don't care if the dishes are dirty I, for a couple and, days. And a month, what is it with us guys? And a month Bro, later. I've done do- this too. Why, why is this? <laughs> I have no idea. And a month later, I'm doing it again. And a month later, I'm doing it again. And it just, it, I've never... I've never even said this to her. And like, how is she going to know that I'm keeping this mental tracker or whatever? And finally, like at some point, like we talked about it and I was like, Oh, I've got to ask you to do these things. I can't just expect you to see that this needs to be done and and for you to do it. And so those expectations, I'm the one that was being let down because I had these expectations on Dana that I had never communicated. And that's my fault. It's not Dana's fault for not doing this stuff because I never told her I, I wanted her to do these things. And some of it I found when it comes to this, and Dana, you can speak into it. 
like I realized in that, because man, this is huge. Uh, we, we had to figure this out early on in our marriage was yes. this expectations because my wife's dad, he is, he is literally like Jesus and, and he, he'll do anything and he jumps up off the couch. And I remember one time we're all watching TV with her parents and her, Dana and her mom were like, Oh, we could just really go for some chocolate right now. And we're in the middle of a show. And he like jumps up from the couch. He's like, okay, I'll drive to the grocery store and go get you guys some. And I'm like, okay. If this is the expectation, <laughs> I'm about to fail because I there ain't no way I'm stopping my show to go get you chocolate. Yeah, and and we had to work that because Dana actually had an expectation that I was going to be like her dad, and I had an expectation that my wife was going to cook, and and neither. <laughs> but I think he, not. And this is what my point is: sometimes in the discussion of the expectations, we realize that it's an unrealistic expectation mm -hmm. to right. even mm -hmm. expect that. And then we can dismantle it. Right. What were some right. of the things or how did you guys navigate some of that? Just talking, you said, but did you guys find that you, you could unpack it and then it wasn't even real in some you, of these areas? Usually there was oh, conflict to get sure. to that conversation. <laughs> because I, you yes. The yes. So Andrew, like when we first had little kids, I was kind of overwhelmed. Yes, I grew up in a big family, but I was never the parent. I was just helped, you know? Yeah. And... I would be overwhelmed and at my wits end by the end of the day with them. And Andrew would walk into the house and just get ambushed by me. Like I would just be like, I can't anymore. And I would just like <laughs> melt your, and be like, here's, here's your, your children. I can't look at them anymore. I, I'm didn't, I didn't make dinner yet. They're all hungry. Here's the kids. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it was, it an was bad. Like, it was a complete ambush and it was dicey for a little bit because he, and then he was just fresh and like he had worked all day and didn't, didn't know what was coming. I, he eventually figured it out that probably every day. Was <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we, he told me when I cannot walk into this ambush anymore. And I was like, Ooh, okay. And he was like, you need to at least call me on my way home. He had a commute and he's like, let me know how your day mm. was because it doesn't, if it was bad, it was bad and you're overwhelmed and it doesn't change that. But at least I can mentally prepare no, and good. decompress on my way home. And we just got better and better at communicating these things before they got so big that it blew up. Yeah. She, she would tell me, Andrew, today was a rough day. I need you to, when you come home, I need you to take the kids and go leave. to McDonald's. And I need like <laughs> 30 minutes to just zone <laughs> up in my room or something before I can even. Yeah. So I had 30 minutes to, to mentally prepare and think, okay, when I come in, this is what I'm walking into. And so I could walk in and be like, hey boys, and get down there and grab them. And like, let's go outside and just go. But that ambush is intense. It is. Yeah. Especially when you're expecting, you've had a wonderful day at work and you're coming or in. Or you've had a hard day at work. Or yeah. that. Yeah. Either yes. way. Either way, it's not, it's not a good situation. But you have to communicate that. And again, Communication we, is yes. so key. Okay. So then this is the, the question here. I think uh, how I'm, a, I'm, I'm listening to this podcast and, and I'm trying to figure out. So I'm just going to pretend I'm somebody who's listening to this podcast and I'm, I'm listening to you. Can you give me some tools in which I can find ways to communicate with my spouse? I, I, I'm struggling. We, we can't seem to find a, a space to communicate. What would be some of the, the, the like three things that you guys would say like in that communication that has really helped you? Is it just stopping in the moment? Like what, what is it that helped you in those moments? Are you just paid attention? And then when it got to a point, you just had to say something like, how did you unpack that? And how can I, as a listener, get better at that? It was a lot of trial and error. I mean, I, a lot of times communicating in the moment when you're, is not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, you know, when the kids are around, just whatever, because you're, there's a lot of emotion. I, we, I think we would take a little bit of time to just like reflect and be like, why am I so fr like life should be a little bit better than this, a little bit happier, a little bit yeah. easier. Like we, what can we do? Like what? I think is a lot of people are struggling right now. Just as what you're describing. Yes. I thought it was going to be better. Yes. This is really hard. Yes. So you're speaking, you're speaking the language of people that are right now out there 
what was it? Where did you find it? What was the key to unlock this communication? There were, I feel like there are a few things. One is um, when we wanted to have that conversation, we had to plan it. That way, it's not emotional. Or I, mm. I'm in. I'm. I'm ready. I've got my. I've got my arguing points. My guns are ready to go. Or it's and, not two o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh! When, when you can't, you can't physically. I, like, yes. as you, I know you can't see them, but I feel like this is that an experience was, that really yes. is happening. That was one. I was like, Dana, it is two o'clock in the morning. I've got to be up in three hours. But I, I need to tell you this now. I could not have this conversation right now. Like, you couldn't ask me this four hours ago. Like that would. That was another one. And so it was. But learning, oh my gosh, learning when good. to have the discussion, and sometimes it meant you need to write it down. Yeah, and we would, and sometimes we'd be like, "Hey, I've got some things I want to talk to you about. Let me know when you're ready, or I whatever." Sometimes it was. would even let him read what I wrote because maybe I wouldn't articulate it how I actually. Or her emotion doesn't come through her voice when she's writ- when it's written down. I don't hear the emotion in her voice. Yeah, he just sees what's frustrating me or what's happening, and then I can I can tell I can then expound on it and be emotional, whatever. But he already knows how I feel. Yeah. So I, I think the second thing that I was going to say is, is reading books like the five love languages you yeah. mentioned and getting to know your spouse um, get, getting to understand them, how they work, how they think, how they recharge, mm. how they feel love, how they show love all. Of so the, what like, was a groundbreaking book for you? Was it the five love languages? Five love languages was yeah. one. And then another one was for men only. And then there's a, uh, the woman's version for women only. And those, those two, two are, books are so good. The, so when the, for men only, do I read that yes, as a man? It's, okay. Yes. And it's written by the wife. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got and it. Then the, and vice versa. versa. And I am telling you the conversations that came from those two books were revolutionary because I did not realize how different we were as men oh and women. Gosh. And he did it. Like it was kind of groundbreaking. Like we were just like, Oh my God. I you, would read something think this way. Dana? Like, is this normal? She's like, Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> yes. yes. Like, why don't you think this way? I was like, okay, I guess I'm weird. I mean, for instance, just a guy. in the books, the like first or second chapter is about sex for the men. For women, it's like the ninth or tenth chapter. Yeah. It's just we are very different. And yeah. I would be like, "Do you actually think this way?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, of course like, I do." Yes. Like, yeah. why don't you understand this? <laughs> and it just helped me realize we are so different. But that's why God made us perfect yeah. for each other. And learning each other, what I, I had a mentor that was like, "Get a PhD in your MAN." She would always say that. Yeah, because she would just like learn learn each other i feel like even it's it's interesting when it comes to marriage dana and i knew each other before kids Mm -hmm. right so we got married we we had a we had a relationship Mm -hmm. and then when you throw kids in there it's almost like you have to relearn that relationship and figure out how are we going to work in the midst of children and then Mm -hmm. now even for us like our kids are older and recognizing that there's a new season and what does that look like for us? And so I, I just, right. I, I think a good marriage, and I think I hear you guys saying this, a good marriage is just, you're, you're constantly evolving. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're seeking ways to make each other better, knowing yourself, knowing each other, seeking mentors. You know, I would just, just say to any, anyone listening in the podcast is look around, mm-hmm. find some people whose kids that your marriage that you like. I remember Dan and I did this when we were actually engaged. We saw people mm-hmm. in the church mm-hmm. and we were like, Hey, could you mind if we just take you out to dinner? We paid for their dinner mm-hmm. and then just showed up with a bunch of questions. Tell us your top three things. What, what was the one thing that you struggled in? And that made a massive difference. Huge. I have, I have one last question here. Um, and, and it's really just more of that, this thing that just says, Hey, listen, we're really struggling. Just give me your top three things of, listen, we, we're, we don't even think we're going to make it. Mm-hmm. What is, what are, what are three things that I can do right now to change everything or, or just at least get the ball rolling? I know it's a lot to put on, on you guys right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> give me three things to change everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, this is very practical and we're going to get into like, obviously like getting into the word, things like that. But this is super, super practical. And it helped me because you're going to get frustrated with each other. You're going to, there's, you know, there's going to be times where you're just like, you don't really like the other person that much. Yeah. And I would just try to, life is all about changing your perspective. And I would just try to remember in those moments, what, how, what made me first fall in love with him? What do I really love about mm. him? 
just to change my perspective because I, I love him. Like I want to spend the rest of my life with him. I wish he didn't have to go to work. I wish we could spend every day together. Yeah. And that helped me just shift my perspective. Life is all about your perspective. It really is. Yeah. And so practically speaking, that was something that really, really helped me with that relationship when we're really frustrated you know, whatever it is, we're in the trenches with the kids and I'm having trouble like wanting to be intimate or what, whatever it is in that moment. And I'm just like, why did I first fall in love with him? And so that's very practical. That's really good. Um, also just like getting into the word. I mean, put on some worship music, mm. be reminded of who you are, how, you know, God made you what he says about you in his word. Um, what he says about being a parent. I mean, it's all, all of it's good. It's just hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, again, your perspective. Yes. Yeah. And I would just say this to, to the listeners. Sometimes when you hear get into the word, it, it feels daunting. Like, where do I yeah. even open up my Bible? And I would just encourage you go to, um, what are called the epistles, the smaller books of mm -hmm. the new Testament. It's yeah. Ephesians and Galatians and Philippians. Yes. These are real short books, but they're powerful and they deal with relational issues. They mm -hmm. deal with just our relationship with God, the way he views us. And it's a quick read, right? Yes. So you can get into it and be like, Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you're just opening up the Bible and you don't know where to go, you're like, <laughs> you she go said, to numbers. Yeah, and she said, she you. said, just start reading the Bible. And then you get in there and you're like, this is not helping. You know? This is not helping me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would say also, like we said mentorship before, um, but that will help you also get that perspective. Because so sometimes I know I struggled re reading the word and just having it make sense, I guess. Like I wanted someone to tell me face to face what I need to do. Yeah. And so having that mentor will help give you perspective about, hey, Andrew, your your thinking is off on this. Yeah. And we had mentors do that, and to to both me and Dana. Like Dana, you just need a man up. Yeah. Like stop stop acting like this. And I was like, yeah. why can't I say that to her? Yeah. Well, because that's our, there are mentors, and and they have there's there's a level of um of trust there. Yeah. Um. But the other thing I was going to say is spending time together. And Dana talked about, like, why did I fall in love with my husband? Mm. And and I enjoyed sitting down and reminiscing about those times that we fell in love and talking about those, like, when we were dating, when we first, when we were, quote, unquote, just friends and hanging <laughs> out and kind of remember that and get back into that, which means you've got to probably get a babysitter, set aside time yeah. and all of that where you can actually sit down and just reconnect with each other. Yes. Yes. And, and then the, the final thing, I know we've got a whole list here, but um, the, the last thing I was going to say is that um, you're never going to fix someone else. You're never going to change the other person. All you can control is yourself. And so focus on you being, you changing what you need to change and just praying that God will, will help your spouse. And honestly, by changing yourself, it usually fixes really the problem. Good. Mm -hmm. brilliantly said with, with that it is hard to believe that our time is up uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and Andrew and Dana it has been a pleasure and I, I think just ending with that you know um, I talked to my daughter uh, many times about just a circle and the only the only thing I can really change is the circle around me like I, I can't mm -hmm. change anybody else and and I just I have to be better at focusing on what I can change which is me and then finding ways to love those around me. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, like you said, Andrew, just getting better at asking the Holy Spirit about my life and, yeah. and pursuing Jesus and having mm -hmm. him change me. Because in that, something really incredible takes place. And I, I just want to thank you guys for being on the podcast today. Because first of all, you're amazing people. And, you know, talk about mentors. It, it, you know, it would be good for you. You know, like if you're listening and you're like, man, I just need somebody. Find some people in our church, you know, in a small group. It, it doesn't have to be pastors. I think so many times we think it has to be, you know, a pastor or something. But these are, there's some amazing people in our church that if you're needing some help in relationship or just want to ask some questions, mm -hmm. I just want to encourage you, you know, there are easy ways to do it. Get in a small group. Find small groups where they're talking about kids. And there's a great way to connect. We're so glad that you joined us today. And I just want to pray for you. Pray for your relationships and pray for what God is doing in your life. And Father, I just thank you for every listener today. I thank you, Father, that wherever they find themselves, that you are moving on their behalf. I thank you that there is no hill that is too high and, too, and a valley too low that, God, you cannot move, change, and rearrange. 
Lord, that's that's who you are. You're bringing people together. You're you're making marriages better, Father. And so, Lord, I thank you that we can actually be a part of that process by yielding to you. Mm-hmm. And so, I pray right now, Jesus, that you would put a bring fresh um, perspective and yes. an excitement, Lord, for the days ahead. That God, this can get better, mm-hmm. and it actually can be amazing. And, and not and I just come against the lies of the enemy that that if I just change all of this that somehow it's going to be better that Lord I realize that you want to change me and so Holy Spirit we just ask right now that you continually move in our lives I pray for marriages I pray for our kids I thank you Lord that you're doing miracles in our children's lives and all the families and everyone that's a part of City Reach Church I bless you today in Jesus name well we're so thankful Amen. to have you guys with us thank and thank you, you for, for being a listener today and don't forget to share this and um, subscribe and we can't wait to see you on Sunday morning. Until then, praying for you and keep declaring God's word everywhere you go. We love you and have a great week.